Okay, so this happened to me yesterday on Twitch. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, 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 gimme that right now. This guy's gonna play like this, it'll be an easy game, but... Dude, I don't even know what to say anymore. It's not like that's not possible, but it's just my luck. I swear, when I play Madden, I have the worst luck in the world, and I'm actually really happy that was being streamed in front of I don't know how many other people because I, I can't I can't make that stuff up. Like, it happens every single time I play Madden. Ended stream right after that. Like, right in the middle of stream, I ended it, I got off. I was so mad. I honestly feel like every time Madden sees that I log on, they just go and turn up all of my opponent's sliders to the maximum difficulty. I, dude, I need Madden 22, and I need it right now. Please, please, please just give me the game now. All right, what is up guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, this video again at the end will include some fan mail, so stick around for that. But for the actual video for today, we're going to talk about one hit wonders. Now, it could be injury, it could be personal problems, it could just be lack of skill, I don't know. But these guys were great for one year and then they just said, nah, I'm out and never performed at that level again. Before the video starts, guys, head over to gfuel.com and use code Wyatt's World to save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. All right, so we'll start off this list with probably the most obvious person, Peyton Hillis. If you don't know who Peyton Hillis is, that's fine, because not a lot of people probably do if you didn't start watching football before 2012. Yes, this was the guy who made the front cover of Madden after rushing for 1,177 yards and 11 touchdowns. You're telling me in 2010 there was not one person who had a better year than that? Bullshit. But yeah, that was literally it for Peyton Hillis. That one year he made the front cover of Madden, the following year he dropped down to 500 yards and three touchdowns. Then he went to Kansas City for one year, barely played, and finished out with two years at the Giants. I think he was like a third string running back. Peyton, you might have been a one-year wonder, but you will be part of Madden history forever. Up next, we have Alan Hearns in 2015 with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He had 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. Him and Alan Robinson were like the most deadly tandem in the league that year. Again, that was it though, and that was back in 2015. Since then, he hasn't surpassed 500 receiving yards. He played for Jacksonville for like four years, then he went to Dallas, snapped his ankle in one of the most disgusting injuries I've ever seen, went to Miami for a year, got drilled in the head for a really bad concussion, and I don't think he's played since. Like I said, his production basically seized in 2015, and I think he opted out last year, but I'm not sure we'll ever see him play again. Especially if he's in Miami, I don't know who he's going to beat out. All right, up next is Gary Barnage. Ah, uh, yeah, the Browns are going to be a repeating offender on here a few times. 2015 with the Browns, he was a pro bowler, had a thousand yard season with nine touchdowns. Before that, he had been in the league since 2008 with the Carolina Panthers, and he had done nothing. And then when he came to the Browns, he did nothing, gathering under 200 yards for his first two seasons. Then he had his Pro Bowl season. The following season, he remained with Cleveland, dropping down to 600 yards, two touchdowns, and he retired. Kind of weird that he peaked, you know, at the very end of his career rather than right away. Talk all the shit we want, at least he made a Pro Bowl. But yeah, other than that, Gary Barnard, you were ass. Up next we have Brandon Lloyd. Any Denver fans will know who I'm talking about here. Another Pro Bowler in 2010, he had an insane season. 1,400 receiving yards, 11 touchdowns, and he never ever came close to that again. This guy played for like six different teams. The closest he ever came to 1,400 again was 900 yards. And I think it was for one year following that big season, and then I think he quietly exited the league as well. Looks like he tried to make a comeback in 2014, but it didn't go over so well. It actually looked like one of his more average years, tallying only 300 receiving yards and one touchdown. <laughs> Brandon Lloyd, you might be a nice guy, but you were a one-year wonder. <laughs> All right, up next, I love talking about this guy, Sidney Rice. I have the picture of him by Favre because, well, Brett Favre is the reason he put up these numbers. He never, ever, ever came close to a season like this again. 2009, alongside Brett Favre, Sidney Rice gathered a whopping 1,300 receiving yards, 8 touchdowns, and a trip to the Pro Bowl. After that season, he never, ever amounted to a damn thing. He tried to bounce back in Seattle with like a 700-yard season, but it was very short-lived, and that's where he exited the NFL as well. 
I remember that was a crazy time because I didn't really watch football, you know, like consecutively at that time. But I knew who some players were, and I thought Sidney Rice was really good always after that one season. So whenever I'd try and talk about him with my friends, they would always just tell me he's terrible, and I never understood it. Because you're a one-year wonder there, buddy. All right, up next we have Derek Anderson from the 2007 Cleveland Browns. Dude, this piece of shit literally started a game for Buffalo in 2018. I'm not kidding you. I remember watching it happen because Josh was a rookie. Matt Barkley wasn't really that great. Derek Anderson was rostered. He started like two games. He was awful, but no, like seriously awful. I think he was like zero touchdowns, five interceptions or some bullshit like that. But yeah, 2007, Derek Anderson on the Cleveland Browns went 10-5. and five. Throwing for 3,700 yards, 29 touchdowns, 19 interceptions, and made a trip to the Pro Bowl. After that, he would be absolutely terrible the following year, throwing for 1,600 yards, 9 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. The following year, 800 yards, 3 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Then got traded to Arizona, really blew it there, and has been fighting for a spot on and off of the Carolina Panthers roster all the way up to 2018 where he started a game with the Bills, or two, I think it was honestly two, and that piece of shit retired. One of the most infamous interview blowups of all time, Derek Anderson, and I think it was the Cardinals. It's hilarious, look it up. Up next, no disrespect, but RG3. Dude, Offensive Rookie of the Year? 815 rushing yards, 7 rushing touchdowns, 3,900 passing yards, 20 passing touchdowns, 5 interceptions. And of course, a trip to the Pro Bowl. After that, he did get hurt, but he just never ever even compared to his rookie form. After losing his job to Kirk Cousins in Washington, he went to Cleveland for a year, got really injured, I think it was his elbow there, and now he's been in Baltimore backing up Joe Flacco and now Lamar Jackson. But, I've heard that he's been blowing people away with how good he is in the booth, so he might be an announcer very soon. He's a really good dude, I hope the best for RG3, but yeah man, you're a one-year wonder. Alright, up next I gotta put a Buffalo Bill in here and I can't do Stevie Johnson. We'll go with CJ Spiller. Right when I started watching, just like this was like the first year I started watching football, this guy was a tank and I thought he was just gonna be the next big thing and he, he was never good again. 2012 he was a pro bowler with the Buffalo Bills rushing for 1200 yards, only 6 touchdowns, but he also averaged 6 yards a carry on that. After that he slowed down, I don't think he ever broke a thousand yards again. I think I read he did have some like personal issues outside of football, but even with that, his talent just never ever appeared to come back, and at one point he was cut by the Kansas City Chiefs four times in one year. That was just in 2017, only four years ago. The almighty CJ Spiller, man, I'll never forget you, but yeah, you were kind of a uh, one and done. Up next we have Steve Slayton. Very, very short career, only like four years, and in his rookie season, he rushed for 1,282 yards and nine touchdowns. He also caught 377 yards and one touchdown. That was in 2008. The following year, his rushing dropped down to 400, but his receiving stayed up there at 400. 2010, 93 rushing yards, 11 receiving yards. 2011, 24 rushing yards, 3 receiving yards. Out of the league. That was right before I started, you know, actively watching the NFL, so I'm not quite sure what all happened with this guy. Judging that from his rookie season, he averaged 4.8 yards a carry, and the next season dropped to 3.3. I'm gonna assume this guy was just bad. Steve Slayton, you're a legend. And last but not least, because I just can't stand him, David fucking Johnson. 2016, he was a pro bowler, he was an all pro. 1,200 rushing yards, 16 touchdowns, unbelievably good. He got injured like the first week the next season, and he has been garbage ever since. I remember when he came back, he was supposed to be this next big thing, and by week 8, he was a third string running back to Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds. And this year, he was supposed to be the next big thing, and now he wasn't actually awful this year, but he just wasn't good. He was nowhere near the David Johnson we saw in 2016. I guess he'll continue to run the ball in Houston, but his career is going to go nowhere. I just don't get it. How do you go from 1,200 rushing yards? He also had like 800 receiving yards that year, too. It was insane. You go from that to fighting for a job on one of the worst teams in the NFL. In a matter of three years, dude, what the fuck? Alright guys, and that was 10 players in the NFL who I think were one-hit wonders. At this point, I'm going to shoot you guys over into fan mail, and I will cut you guys off at the end. Alright guys, and now we're on to the fan mail. Sorry if you guys can notice like a change in my voice or energy. I always do fan mails while I film them before the actual video. Just makes things a little bit easier. But yeah, we got uh, a couple packages and some envelopes today. Alright, so first letter is from Charles Quick, I think it says. All this stuff was like in a plastic bag. 
Dude, if this has anthrax on it, I'm gonna be pissed. And it looks like he gave me some basketball cards, oh, baseball cards, wrestling cards. He just gave me a bunch of different kind of sports cards. DeMarco Murray. He also sent me a letter. Just says, from Charles, hello there and keep up the good work. <laughs> and then it's a picture of Antonio Gibson and Diggs. Thank you, Charles. Next package. Oh damn, what the hell? It says, hey Wyatt, I'm Buster. However, you may see me in some of your streams as Buster64Nut. I know that you like getting cards from fans, so I thought I could send you some because it's the best I could do in return for the fire content you upload daily. Through the Bills and the Vikings, go Browns. And as far as the cards he sent me, so he just sent me like a bunch of random cards, but these are really, really nice and really, really nicely maintained like prism cards. That's a Tyrod Taylor and a Teddy Bridgewater. These are really cool. Thank you, Buster. Next package. Okay. Hi Wyatt, my name is Zach. Been watching your videos for a while now. Thanks for the great content. And then he just sent me a bunch of cards. Yeah man, there's a baseball card and then I got a couple hollow paninis in there too. Thank you Zach. Next package. Okay, uh, this is kind of personal, but uh, he, he drew me a picture of Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins. And uh, these were from Zeke in Arizona. Thank you Zeke. Alright, next letter. Oh, what the fuck? Crazy, hold on a second. This is from somebody named Kush, I, th I think I pronounced that right. And they're a fan of mine, and it looks like they've been a fan for a while. Kush is also a Giants fan who appreciate the respect I put on Eli's name. But, look at that drawing, dude, that's insane. That drawing is so cool and it's so good. Thank you, Kush. All right, next one. Dear Wyatt, you're my favorite YouTuber and I love your content. It's sure funny when you rage on Madden and I also love your tier list vids. Keep up the good work and congrats on... Congrats on moving from Jacob. Question, do I think the Cleveland Browns will win the Super Bowl in the next five years? Well, Jacob, I think that they could. Thank you for the drawings, but I don't think that they will because Buffalo is going to win the next five. All right, up next, this one is in like a jiffy of some sort. What the fuck? Hey Wyatt, your videos are the perfect entertainment while I'm outside of school, although sometimes your hot takes blow my head off. I'm a Packers fan. Oh, okay, I gotcha. And also, yes, Jamal Williams is underrated. He drew this insane picture of me though. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it's my profile picture on all my social medias. Thank you, man. I don't know if you named yourself, but I uh, appreciate that, and I will keep this drawing, absolutely. From a Bears fan, and it's a Bills logo with my W in the background, and the Bills has a Viking horn on it. That's actually kind of really cool, dude. Bills logo kind of looks good with the horns, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so I'm not really sure what just happened. The video, like, cut out. I really hope I don't miss anybody's mail. I don't think I will, because I'm pretty sure we went on to the packages. But I already opened them, but they're still here. So a guy named Leo in northern Minnesota sent me a baseball cap from his team and a Stefan Diggs card. Fucking glare. And uh, the best actually stands for the four towns that make up his baseball team. Leo, if I ever go on a win streak at Madden or something, that'll be like my ninja headband. I appreciate it. And then a Browns fan who picked this shirt up at the draft, which I thought was cool, sent me a Chiefs shirt. It's really, really big, but he wanted to send it to me because I didn't have any Chiefs apparel, which is super nice, man. And I still appreciate it because I love collecting football things. So seriously, Jared, thank you. And I got another package from a kid named Caden who sent me just a bunch of random things, but he sent me a drawing, a Cardinals hat that looks kind of uh, heavily used, so I'm not going to wear it, but I appreciate it. A John Cena and zombie Brock Lesnar action figure. A Grand Theft Auto 5 map and some football cards. Not sure what I'm gonna do with that stuff, but thank you, Caden, and I read your letter. Appreciate you. Alright, otherwise I think I got all the mail now. Alright, sorry for the little cluster bomb at the end there. I'm not quite sure what happened. But I hope I included everybody's mail, and thank you guys so much for sending everything. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, guys. I post every single day. Hope to be on Twitch a couple times this weekend, as long as that Madden shit doesn't happen again. But I'll for sure be back on Monday for Madden Monday. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'm gonna hop off, but as always, I will see you in the next video.